Hey y'all, this is Cuddlebone Casting. This isn't intended for jewelers or, or any sort of professionals or, or even serious hobbyists. This is just, I wanted to film this because this is something that uh, we as gold prospectors can do with our gold um, easily and cheaply. Uh, if you saw my last video, these are some, some gold buttons. They're more or less refined. Uh, probably 98, 90%, 98 or 99% pure, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to take these and do something with them. I uh, see, so, you know, something that, that looks like more than just a blob of gold. And uh, one of my friends had mentioned that I should investigate cuddle bone casting. And uh, that's a, this, this is a, the, it's like a hard carapace from a, I'm not exactly sure what the biology of it is, but if you happen to be lucky enough to live next to an ocean, you can go out apparently and pick these up. Uh, I am in the middle of the driest possible part of the country right now, so I don't have these available. Uh, as such, I had to order them from Petco. They're not very expensive. Um, I think I ended up paying... I think they, they came in packs of six and they were three dollars a piece, but I'm not exactly sure. But it wasn't much more than that, if anything. Uh, so that that is one place that you can order them. At, but it's really easy to take a tool like this this little screwdriver and really carve anything into it. Uh, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but there's a whole lot of bone texture in this. It's it's almost like a uh, kind of almost looks wood woody in a way. But um, it's it's actually kind of nice, uh, but apparently that shows up in your castings as well. This I should say is the first time I've ever tried this. I don't know how it's going to go. Essentially, you take these these cuddle bones, cut off the the ends of them so that you're left with two flat ends right here, and then these two. Actually, you cut two pieces of it, and you're left with two pieces. You take and sand them down, and then. Uh, I found that it actually made a tighter fit if after sanding you rub them together and then you're left with two pieces that, that just fit together flat perfectly. And uh, then you find your item that you want to cast, in this case I'm starting really simply just with a coin, and uh, press it in if it's an, an object of, of really low relief like this coin is. It's not going to want to go in very far, so you got to press it in. And then I took this screwdriver and took off just thin layer by thin layer, scraping off with this screwdriver, and then put the coin back in, press it in again, uniformly, or as uniformly as possible. And I got it about halfway. So my next step is to take this the second half and put it on top and then carve the relief into this half as well. What I'm doing or what uh, I saw that uh, the, the way that other people were doing it were, was they would take uh, toothpicks or a piece of rigid wire um, and stick them in the corners and press this down over over the, the rigid pieces of whatever they were using. I don't have toothpicks, I don't have any thick wire. I have spaghetti, so I'm giving it a try. It's all that I have. Uh, now I'm going to take this second piece, line it up with my first piece, and then just press it down onto those pegs. And then keep pressing to get an impression of that coin because these two pieces are almost completely touching now. So I'm going to pull it apart and you can see the little outline the coin made and then I got my four peg outline so I can when I place this back on it'll go on exactly on top of that coin exactly where it was. But in the meantime I'm just going to take one more tiny layer off I 
I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Man. That, that's some real nice... Uh, it's, it's the structure of the bone itself. So it should be interesting to see how much of that shows up on the coin. I'm, I'm guessing that... I, I don't think there's a good method to, to cast something like a coin that's precision, that has sharp, defined edges. Because I think, I, I, well, I have a feeling you're going to see more of this texture than you will see of the any sort of definition or relief on the coin, like, like the carving. And uh, uh, the other thing that I, I should mention that I was talking about during the first take is uh, why did I choose a quarter? Well, I calculated a quarter to have, um, what was it? It was uh, eight tenths of a cubic centimeter volume. And gold, of course, is something, what it, it's like 19.3 grams a cubic centimeter is its density. So, I have, with these two buttons, I have, um, it ended up being about 21 grams of gold. And it's about, I'm guessing it's 98, 99% pure. So, um, at roughly 19 grams a cubic centimeter, and a, and a quarter being 8 tenths of a gram, or sorry, 8 tenths of a, uh, cubic centimeter in volume, that means I, I'm going to need something like 16 or 17 grams of gold to fill this this little uh, void, that I, this mold that I'm carving with the, with the quarter. And uh, so that means I'll have, you know, four, four-ish grams, maybe three grams of gold left over. I want to make sure I have more than enough gold to fill this hole. Uh, in, entire mold is the point I'm trying to get at and uh, sorry I'm trying <laughs> this is actually really delicate so I'm trying not to make any errors as I'm talking so I'm kind of uh, bumbling along here <clears throat> alright so I'm dump the quarter out I've taken more or less just one tiny layer, I mean maybe a, a quarter of a millimeter off. Just enough that I can take, set this quarter back into that impression. And then press it in just a little bit further. Just so that these two seat against each other with, with no air holes so that the gold doesn't leak out of this mold. Since I don't have any expectations that I'm going to get any um, any of this relief, the bust or the, or the um, or the text due to this this bone structure, um, I, I really don't want it anyways. Actually, if I had any sort of artistic skills, I'd carve my name into this, or maybe I will just write my name in it just to make it a customized coin. So knowing that I don't want any of that, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just going to take this coin. It's hard to grab that. I'm going to push down and spin it just so it can flatten out the bottom and get rid of any any sort of texture that came from that the eagle on the back. <laughs> That's pretty flat there. Alright. So the next step is now I need to carve what is it called? I think it's called a sprue or some some sort of hole for the uh, I need to pour the gold through the top here. This mold's gonna come together and I'm gonna need to carve a funnel here for the gold to come down into the mold with. So you can see the two little funnels that I cut in there. And then I don't know if this is gonna show up on the camera but uh, I tried carving some text in there. That one's a, a cross pick and shovel with a U.S. miner initials in it. And then uh, the back of the coin or the front says $1 billion because why not? So these two halves just fit together. And you can see that it's there's there's no 
airspace at all. Those fit together really flat. And I'm going to take, wrap it up with electrical tape. Uh, find myself some sand or something. Stick this thing in some sand. Uh, melt my gold and dump it in and I'll show you that in a minute. That's all we have left to do. Then wait for it to cool and pop it out. See if it was successful. Alright, so I just melted the gold. Just dumped it inside my mold. You can see it in there. I guess what I'm worried about is... I don't think my gold got all the way down into the, the little coin mold. But... Let's take this tape off and take a look. Oh, it did. Jack it out. I don't think that mold is reusable. I'm going to dip it in water to cool it down just a little bit more. Whoa. There's my coin. <laughs> How cool is that? Look at the text though. I didn't even think about that. You gotta carve it in as a mirror image into the mold. Duh. <laughs> so all, my, all my text is backwards. You can see the... Uh, you can see the the cuddle bone pattern really well on that. It's kind of cool. So now I just need to take a, a Dremel or some sort of tool and cut this sprue off and then I got my coin. Alright, I got the sprue cut off. Just used a hacksaw. Not a very clean cut but this is just an experiment anyways. It's all for fun. Um, as you can see, there's not very much definition at all in the uh, in the engraving part of the coin. Uh, the the kind of herringbone looking pattern of the cuddle bone pretty much erases it all. But it is enough to where you can kind of get the idea. Uh, so, anyways, there it is. It's uh, it's my own custom gold coin, a mint of one. If that isn't a rare coin, I don't know what is. One billion dollars. <laughs> Anyhow, something fun for you to do with your gold. If you if you got more patience than me, uh, you might you might be able to make a really nice pendant or uh, um, something that has less fine detail. I think would would actually turn out a lot better than this coin. But this is pretty cool, anyways. I'm going to keep it. All right. Thanks for watching.